Uh, Terry Murphy uh, was a long, is a, lo a longtime public policy expert in the state, has had numerous positions at the county level, involvement at the state level, involvement in important institutions in southern Nevada, and understands what the landscape is like. But as uh, Tom Clark said in his, res his remarks, and I think it's important, elected leaders can spur policy and provide focus. And we'd like Terry to get these three individuals up here, spur policy, and provide focus. So please welcome Terry Murphy, Lieutenant Governor Krolicki, uh, the Senate Majority Leader uh, Horsford, and the Speaker John Oseguera. Note that swagger. <laughs> the surround sound is intimidating. I forgot to request the short person's podium, so I've borrowed this microphone and I'm going to stand here so I can see you. Um, before I begin, I would like to thank Ted with USTAR because he told me that in the spirit of regional cooperation, he was going to ask that. Uh, Utah give us 20% of their budget surplus, so that would kind of solve all of our problems. So thank you so much, Ted. Um, the gentlemen here before you have a very difficult task, and to start off, I'd like to just bring together some of the commonalities that I've heard this morning. Most importantly, I've heard from all of our experts that collaboration is key and that we need to create a culture of cooperation. We have a tendency, also Phil Satry said this morning, that the one thing, number one key to success is to resist condemnation. And so as we move into the legislative session, we all have a tendency, those of us who work for public agencies and rely on public funding, to protect what we have and to ask for a little more of it. Well, if we keep that mindset as we go into this next legislative session, what we will end up with is what we've always had, only less of it, because we all know the picture of our financial situation. So what do we do instead? Perhaps together, as Nevada Inc., um, we decide what it is that we need and take away the barriers that we have between our organizations and go out and get it. Um, this morning, Lieutenant Governor Krolicki outlined very, very eloquently all of the assets that we have in the state of Nevada. Senator Horsford pointed out that we are at the convergence of urgency and optimism. And Speaker Oseguera told us that rather than complain about the wind or hope that the wind will change, that we should reset our sails. And so what I'm going to ask these gentlemen, and then you, is how do, we, how do our sales need to be adjusted? What are the barriers to adjusting those sales? And what are the drivers? Um, I'd like to start with uh, Lieutenant Governor Krolicki, and then Senator Horsford and Speaker Oseguera. And then I would like for you to relay to your elected officials what it is you need from them, and I want them to tell you what they need from you because they're in leadership positions but they're there by our by our election we we ask them to be there by voting for them we ask them to be there and they need our assistance so lieutenant governor thank you so much terry and uh, thank you all again your stamina for the day is is uh, remarkable and and uh, thank you to uh, unlv for providing substantial amounts of caffeine to keep everyone in the game today so <laughs> Mike. Am I on? Can you hear me? All right. You know, it's a, I'm an optimist, but I certainly understand what's about to happen. You know, Nevada uh, always seems to be heading into legislative sessions with gray skies and budget shortfalls and things, but you know, this, this is probably the most uh, turbulent time we've had in, in, in decades uh, in, in our modern history as we approach a legislative session in terms of troubled waters, the, uh, to use your sailing analogy. Budget is outrageously difficult. The reapportionment just adds a little juice to the fire. But 
I all, you know, I absolutely believe, and I think again, the room of this size and import is a testament to the effort. We know we need to dedicate energy, focus, the resources that are available, our political clout, our elbow grease, and everything we've got to make sure that we are dedicating ourselves to the future of Nevada's economy and, and the days, you know, shortly ahead, but also the long-term vision thing. Um, I have seen more cooperation uh, in, in a, in a nonpartisan, and I'll use the term post-partisan way, because you know, we feel it. We know it's happening. People are watching. We need to deliver or shame on us. Uh, you know, personalities always play a part, and I think that you know, personal friendships uh, in the Senate uh, will, you know, you know, our problem is with the assembly, not, 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 not the partisan activities on the Senate side. Just teasing. <laughs> you know, I think John Oseguera is a friend of mine for a long time. I think Stephen Horsford and I uh, had lunch probably two decades ago for the first time before we had these high paying jobs. And we have the abilities to work together. We have the ability to reach across the aisle. And Lord knows we feel the, the, the political winds that are blowing that we must deliver. So I, I think, uh, you know, we do need to. You know, we have many different pieces of the puzzle coming together, whether it's the stakeholders group, the task force that we've been doing, uh, the, the campus activity, the chambers in, in engagement, the development authorities around the state, uh, you know, the private folks like, and, and the not-for-profits like Brookings and the Milken Institutes. You know, we are all converging on this moment we will take the best ideas of things we've heard today, many of the ideas already incorporated. I mean, I, I'm, I was uh, teasing Ted, you know, some of the U-Star model, you know, we proposed in legislature in 2001, uh, but when we had a three and a half unemployment rate and, and things were great because we were growing jobs faster than any other state and we had the highest growing per capita income in the country. So, you know, but now is the moment we, we, we have to do this. And I, you know, not to be a Pollyanna, but I, I do believe that we get it. We will agree on certain models. Uh, we have a new committee in the Senate. Uh, we have a new state senator who will be chairing that effort. But we're, we're in this together. Uh, as I said, first thing this morning, uh, the cooperation we've already had in the assembly side, an assemblywoman Kirkpatrick, you know, her partnership, her willingness to work hard, being part of the task force. I mean, I think uh, many of the activities, the emotions, the professionalism, and the sense of honor and duty will trump many of the normal things that happen in a legislative session. I mean, I hope we can do this early <laughs> before certain things do blow up, but I think there are tools available. Monies are always a, a difficult issue, but I would submit and put it on the table, not to make our, our friend in PERS, but as somebody who participates in PERS, I, I'll say it. You know, the resources, the, the tens of billions of dollars in the Nevada PERS system, that is capital that can be used if appropriate, in the investment grade, those kind of things to help us jumpstart some of these activities. Uh, we've suggested in previous years, but we will resuggest. Uh, perhaps uh, with this different momentum, it'll have a, 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 a more cooperative reception. Uh, but you know, new ideas are always hard. But using unclaimed property, you know, Nevada has a constitutional. Excuse me, Brian. I just realized that they put me in the position of having to tell the lieutenant governor that oh. he only has 30 seconds. Thank you very much. I, I yield. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Senator Horsford. I want to start uh, by recognizing, I know there's several legislators here, but on the Senate side uh, in the back, uh, Senator uh, Mike Schneider, who's the chair of uh, the Commerce uh, Committee on uh, Commerce, Labor, and Energy, uh, which a lot of the issues uh, that we've talked about uh, today uh, are a focus, uh, as, as well as Senator uh, Ruben Kiwin, uh, who is here uh, today. If they're here and can wave their hands uh, somewhere, uh, Senator Ke Kiwin will be chairing will be chairing a select committee on economic growth and employment, um, and we decided to do that because like we knew based on all of the challenges that we're having that we needed to have a laser focused attention on those issues. Um, and so one of the action steps that I think can come out of today's meeting is that whatever needs to get done will go to one place 
and be fully vetted and have the time and the attention of a dedicated committee that can review those policies for the benefit of how they grow the economy and put people back to work. And then to the extent they need to be reviewed by other committees, whether they be finance committees or the policy committee of that jurisdiction, they can, be, they can, they can uh, do so. I think, as you've said, Terry, it's, uh, it is about collaboration. It's about breaking down silos. It's about doing things differently. I think in the state of Nevada, we have, tradition, we have held on so closely to our traditions. Some of them are great traditions. I'm a native Nevadan. I went to school in Reno, and there are a lot of great tr traditions in this state. But there are some traditions that we need to move on from. And we have some governance structures in this state that are holding us back from our own success. We have governance structures in uh, the, 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 the s uh, system of education that need to be reviewed. We have governance structures uh, in economic development that need to be reviewed. We have governance structures uh, in the way state government looks that need to be reviewed and acted upon. And so I think the, the speaker and I, uh, we've been working our two caucuses uh, for the last year because we've seen this was coming. I mean, we knew it was bad. We didn't know how bad it would ultimately get. Um, but but there, are, there is some preparation that's in place. And so I will say there's two things that I think we need to do out of here. First and foremost, we need to come up with very specific action steps to put people back to work as soon as possible. Those 200,000 people that we talked about at the start of this conference need jobs to go back to work to. We need them to go back to work because they're part of our economy recovering. The second part that we need to do is the, the longer term planning of, of, of growing our economy into new ways. And I feel that there are very low hanging fruit. The, the renewable energy sector is a no brainer. Uh, but also healthcare and intermodal transportation. We've had interim studies that have looked at this and there are very specific opportunities. That competitive advantage that Don, Don talked about, we know there's a competitive advantage with our airport and our rail uh, system that if enhanced greater, we could capitalize on. Nevada is one of a few states in this region, and I wanted to ask this question of the other states, that doesn't have a financial services sector, a strong financial services sector. So too many of the decisions about getting access to capital for small businesses and even large industry aren't made here in our state. And so we need to figure out a way to bring that sector as well as research and development to the state because those are opportunities that we're missing out on and they're competitive advantages that we're losing to states like Colorado, Arizona, Utah. And I, for one, am very competitive. And I think Nevada should be more competitive, and we shouldn't be lo losing grounds on these key sectors that we have an opportunity to grow in. Thank you, Senator Horsford. Speaker Arcegara? Thank you. Um, he may be competitive, but he's not a very good basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take that, Stephen. He, he's right. <laughs> um, I'd just say a couple things, and I'll try to keep it short and to the, the question. Um, you know, what, did we, what do we need to keep in place? I think we need to keep in place our friendly business environment. I think we need to keep in our fr friendly regulatory environment. And quite frankly, if there's barriers that are in the way, uh, we need to know about them and we need to try to remove them. Um, we don't need no regulation, but if there's regulation that is uh, prohibitive, then we need to try to fix that. You know, obviously funding is going to be a huge issue. Um, that's no... Uh, no, no one is surprised by that, um, but we have to figure out how to figure that problem out. Um, we're going to have different priorities. Uh, the lieutenant governor just said that he uh, had an idea on something that probably I don't agree with, um, but we're going to have to figure out how that we uh, work together on that, and I think you've seen that through this conference um, that people are willing to work together. Um, how do, you know, biggest thing is how do we publicize? I mean, how do we say how great Nevada already is and that how great it's going to be in the future, the next new Nevada, which I talked about this morning. So I think publicizing that is important. Um, I think this conference right here is a great start um, and we just need to take it this next step. Here's, here's the deal, people will ask me, uh, use any subject, 
is there going to be a bill draft on economic development in the next legislative session? Well, yeah, there's going to be a there's going to be a bill draft relating to that. I mean, there's 63 legislators. They'll each each one of them has a number of bill drafts. They'll do what they want to do, but the bill drafts that get through the process are the ones that are well thought out that are brought together by people in a room like this that are discussed in the interim that are worked on that are you know the collaboration and the coordination that we're talking about here that are done now and then those are the ones that are successful the one that is the ones that are introduced on the first day of session are the ones that are not successful so that's kind of the short of it for me okay thanks John um, Okay, here's your opportunity. You've got the Lieutenant Governor, the Majority Leader, and the Speaker of the House right here. Who's got a question? Nobody. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Mark Fine, what do you want to know? Come here. Gotcha. Come on down. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Give that back. All right, how much time do I have? <laughs> let's make a deal. <laughs> Uh, Don Snyder mentioned something that went back to, I think, Dr. Maxim. You were talking about his water in the green spots. And as you know, there's just about every government in this country, other than apparently Utah, is, is struggling the way we're struggling. And one of the green spots is, is the structural uh, cost of government and how governments operate. And I know this is what you're dealing with every day. But the green spot here is if we can get over the hump with regard to um, uh, feasibility, economic feasibility for starting with the state and uh, trickling down through all the different counties. That's a green spot because I think with every single entity in the country having problems and being challenged, we become a very attractive alternative for companies that want to be here and look to a, look to a state that actually is econo economically viable. And the question is how do we get to that point where we become viable? I think we have a lot of opportunities because of the lack of infrastructure over the years that a lot of entities have, but how do we become economically viable so we can compete in the economic diversification uh, forum? Thanks, Mark. <laughs> how, about, um, how about I give a hint? <laughs> I think one of the things, and I'll, then I'll turn it over to you guys, this morning, every single presenter said that what they had that we don't have uh, is a high number, high percentage of college graduates. And so with that as a starter and playing on Mark's question, what is it that we, what is it that we need? How do we keep the cost of government low but build up the number of college graduates that we ha have? I think on that particular question, it's, it's about being more strategic and someone said instead of strategic planning, strategic doing, I would also say um, prioritizing. Right now, every, we, we've been under this 20-year um, fastest growing, we've just added, 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 everyone's pet project, everyone's idea, uh, and it's time for us to stop that nonsense. Um, we have to grow up, right? Uh, we, we've gone through this adolescent stage of um, uh, growing up as a, as a community and as a state, and it's time for us to take Nevada to the next level. And in order to do that, I think we have to be very strategic, and we have to prioritize in ways that we've never done before. What we've attempted to do in the legislature in preparation for what we know is happening with this budget crisis um, is we believe the state government should look drastically different than it does today. And that should come in three forms. Um, state government should look different in, in, in the number of departments. There should be more efficiency and there should be consolidation. There are certain state functions that are done today um, that other states, those that were on the panel, aren't, the, the, those services aren't provided for in those states. They're provided for by local governments, by private sector, by nonprofits, um, but yet in the state of Nevada, we've done them. Um, on this issue of education, though, specifically, let me say this. Because we're so far at the bottom, 
if we're strategic and make some very fundamental uh, uh, smart decisions and come up with solutions that really work, we can move very quickly uh, to, to, to moving from dead last in a lot of categories to being somewhere more respectable. And I thought it was very instructive from Stan Jones to hear, for example, the longer the student stays in remediation doesn't necessarily uh, produce better results. But yet if you look over the legislation over the last couple of years, you would think that's all we're trying to emphasize is more and more remediation of students, um, for example. So that's, I think, an, an area where if we're smarter, if we can learn from each other what the best practices are, um, and if we can build that consensus, uh, we can move our state forward and we can move it forward fast. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Mark, your question had a lot of different pieces in, in it, and it could be about budget, investment in education, investment in the new paradigm, if you will, to construct this economy going forward. Now, I think we all agree, and it's a, probably a, a safe thing to say on a university campus, you know, education is front and center, you know, the, 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 the key to most of those things that we want to achieve. We must uh, make sure that the, the focus remains you know, resources will always be tight, but we, we have to make sure that the, that, that the future employees, the educated workforce, the dynamic uh, intellectual property development, you know, this is the cradle of that uh, at UNLV, DRI, our friends at, at UNR doing an extraordinary job at this. But uh, you know, we, we need to make sure that we are graduating folks who can accommodate that future of tomorrow that those businesses want. They need that educated workforce. But I, I think uh, you know, you know, the old treasure in me. There's still a, you know the practical financial. How do we jumpstart some of these things? I mean, there are avenues to do this, and and uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to watch times and cards and <laughs> things. So I, I've been captured twice already, but um, you know. You know there are ways to do it. I mean, you know whether you know we can agree or disagree, but you know PERS invests in things around the country. That's what it does. What is an investment portfolio? I think Nevada, its infrastructure, its its businesses, its incubators are a great investment for Nevada employee pension monies. It's long term. It's appropriate. It's fiduciary. Uh, things like unclaimed property. You know we have a constitutional prohibition of the state lending its money or credit to for-profit enterprises. You know, I look at some of the other states that are presented today, they don't have that. They could appropriate tens of millions of dollars to get things going. We don't have that luxury. So we need to look outside that box, horrible term. We need to have a strategic plan. You know, if we're all sitting together saying, we agree on this, our private sector partners agree with this, higher education believes in what we're doing, this is a plan we can buy in. I think that private and the not-for-profit and, and, and the, uh, the philanthropic folks will step up to the table and help us see this effort so that sign on Nevada to the folks outside, we're open, we're back, we're, re we're revitalized, we're ready, and just hang on, put on your seatbelt. Thank you. In one minute, um, which is what we have left, I want to ask each of you, aside from campaign contributions, what is it that you need from the people in this audience? The one thing, what do, you, what do you need from the business and academic community to get your jobs done? Be a resource. Thank you. Very, thank you for your brevity. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say this, on, on uh, January 24th, the governor will present his budget. Uh, and he will deliver the state of, of the state address uh, to the citizens. And we all want this governor to be successful because we need him to succeed so that all of us as Nevadans can succeed. There, there will be things in his budget that we won't agree with. There will be things in his budget we will like. And there will be things in his budget that we will have to accept because of the dire circumstances that we're in as a state. What I would ask is that you truly engage in this process. Nevada is at a crossroads. We have no more um, short uh, term stop gap measures. There is no federal stimulus that's going to come from the federal government to keep our teachers 
uh, in the classroom, uh, it's on us now as Nevadans. And it's on all of you in this room and those employees and colleagues that you work with who are going to have to engage with us to make some very critical decisions. And so after the governor releases his budget and we disagree with the things that we don't agree with him on and, and give compliment to those things we do, we are going to need to roll up our sleeves and figure out the rest. And we need your help to do that because we don't have all of the solutions or the answers. And a big part of us fixing our budget is growing our economy. The speaker and I had a meeting with several economic development leaders and we asked for this type of an effort to be undertaken so that the private sector could present to us as policymakers what needed to happen to grow our economy. That's why we're here today. And the work that we do between now and the next couple of months will determine whether or not we're serious about that. So we're looking for your continued participation, your ideas, and solutions that we need to grow our economy and put people back to work. Thank you. Lieutenant Governor, anything to add? <laughs> you can. <laughs> I, I always have something to add. Um, but I know there's time. Quickly. <laughs> Your support, your engagement, your, your patience, hold our feet to the fire. Uh, difficult decisions abound, but if we waste this opportunity to not just address the superficial things and just to balance a budget, the structural challenges within the state's balance sheet, assets, liabilities, you know, the foundation going forward. You know, I hope that as we, we are just enmeshed in, in some of the most, you know, disturbing kind of conversations you can have you know we do this to help people not not to hurt people this legislative session is going to be brutal but i hope that the solutions and the conversations we have are not just about you know june 30 and how to leave town but how we can set the stage for the next five or 20 years and uh, we need your support we need your engagement and again thank you so much for being here today thank you very much um you should all know that these gentlemen serve for pretty much uh, not a lot of pay and it's really hard to get the job in the first place and they do it for the purpose of getting beat up in the press every day. So thank you all gentlemen. <laughs>